Welcome back to Very Ordinary Differential Equations. In this lecture, we'll be reviewing some topics from linear algebra that will shortly be very important for us. Notationally, I will try to represent matrices and columns with boldface letters. So suppose that A is a matrix, V is a non-zero column vector, and lambda is a non-zero real or complex number, so that the product AV is equal to the scalar product lambda V. Then V is called an eigenvector of the matrix A with eigenvalue lambda. Let's examine restrictions placed on the dimensions of these objects. So let's suppose A is n by m. In order for the product AV to be defined, since V is a column, it only has one, one column, but the number of rows must equal m. So V is m by 1. In this case, AV would be n by 1. But since lambda is just a scalar, lambda v has the same dimensions as v. It must be m by 1. Therefore, m must equal n, and therefore a must be a square matrix. So we're only talking about eigenvectors and eigenvalues when a is a square matrix. It's the only situation where it will make sense for us. Now, eigenvectors with their corresponding eigenvalues Sometimes in an introductory linear algebra course, they're not highly stressed or people forget about them very shortly after the course concludes, but they're going to be very important for us. So let's suppose V1 through VK are eigenvectors and they have corresponding eigenvalues lambda1 through lambda k. Then for any scalars C1 through CK, if you were to take the matrix A and have it act on the linear combination C1V1 plus C2V2 all the way up to CKVK, well, matrix multiplication is linear, so I can distribute this as AC1V1 plus AC2V2 and so forth. The scalars factor out, so this would be C1AV1, C2AV2, but because they are eigenvectors, VI, with eigenvalues lambda i, AV1 is equal to lambda 1 V1 and so forth. So for eigenvectors v1 through vk corresponding eigenvalues lambda 1 through lambda k, if the matrix A acts on any linear combination of v1 through vk, the product can be expressed very nicely like this. Now since the lambda i's are also non-zero, we can use reciprocals 1 over lambda 1, 1 over lambda 2 in order to preemptively cancel them out. So notice what we have here. We have A of a linear combination of the V's equals a linear combination of the V's. Similarly, any linear combination you want to get out, A of this linear combination would produce the one that you wanted. In other words, the span of the vectors V1 through VK is the same as the span of the vectors av1 through avk, or lambda1 v1 through lambda k vk. So this subspace is called invariant under multiplication by a, the subspace being the span of your eigenvectors. When you take vectors in that subspace and multiply by a, you are guaranteed to remain in that subspace. It is invariant. So when a represents some sort of linear transformation, subspaces spanned by eigenvectors are invariant subspaces. When this subspace is explicitly presented as having a basis v1 through vk, a basis of eigenvectors, we have a very easy way of computing how the transformation acts. As we already wrote, a of any linear combination of the vi can just be written as a very related linear combination of the vi. So let's suppose that A is a square matrix with eigenvector V and lambda is the corresponding eigenvalue. So AV is equal to lambda V. Therefore, AV minus lambda V is zero. Now, lambda V is a column vector. AV is a column vector. In order to do this um, factoring, I need this to be a square matrix so that I can do the difference a minus something. And the correct thing to put here is lambda times the n by n identity matrix. So if v is an eigenvector of a, then v is in the null space of the linear transformation a minus lambda i. The null space of a transformation is just everything that is sent to zero. So if v is an eigenvector of a, then a minus lambda i of v must be zero. 
So let's suppose lambda is non-zero and v is in the null space of a minus lambda i. In other words, v is an eigenvector of a. Since we assumed that v is not zero, it follows that the columns of a minus lambda i are not linearly independent because we have a matrix times a non-zero vector is the zero column. Therefore, this matrix cannot be formed of linearly independent columns. Therefore, it must have zero determinant. Because the columns are not linearly independent, the determinant of this matrix must be zero. So if V is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda, then the determinant of A minus lambda I must be zero. So suppose we consider lambda to be a variable, compute the determinant of a minus lambda i, which is called the characteristic polynomial of a, and find its roots. Well, any eigenvalue must be a root of this polynomial. Therefore, finding roots of this polynomial is a way to find possible eigenvalues. Now, once we have candidates for eigenvalues by finding roots of the characteristic polynomial, we can solve a v equals lambda v to try to determine the eigenvector v that we can associate to the eigenvalue lambda. There may be multiple and even multiple linearly independent column vectors v with the same eigenvalue. The multiplicity of lambda as a root in the characteristic polynomial is called the algebraic multiplicity of lambda. It's the number of times that lambda can be factored out as a root of the characteristic polynomial. However, the maximal number of linearly independent eigenvectors with eigenvalue lambda is called the geometric multiplicity of lambda. Now, the geometric multiplicity is always less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity, and that might be a strict inequality. It is possible to have an algebraic multiplicity which is larger than your geometric multiplicity. Now let's let A be an n by n matrix and assume that we have found n linearly independent eigenvectors, v1 through vn. They have corresponding eigenvalues, lambda1 through lambda n. Now the eigenvectors are assumed to be linearly independent. The eigenvalues are just scalars. They might be the same as one another. They might not be. Since AVI is lambda i vi, what follows is that if we were to take our n linearly independent columns and make a matrix out of them, then the square matrix A times the square matrix whose columns are given by the VI would simply be given by columns given by scalar multiples of VI because the VI were assumed to be eigenvectors of A. Now, since we have N linearly independent eigenvectors, we can use them as a basis for our space. So we can use the VI as a basis for a space, and now this tells me that multiplication by A acts very nicely on this matrix formed out of columns made up by the VI. So suppose we were to use V1 through VN as a basis for our vector space. From this matrix representation above, Multiplication by A with respect to a basis made up of eigenvectors is extraordinarily simple. The first column got multiplied by lambda 1, the second by lambda 2, and so forth. In other words, the matrix representation of A, if we can find a basis made up of eigenvectors, is a diagonal matrix. For our first example, let's find all eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors for the matrix A, which is given here. Well, we need to compute the characteristic polynomial. In other words, the determinant of A minus lambda I. So from the matrix A, I subtract lambda on the diagonal, and here we have it. To compute the determinant of this, there are many ways we could do it. I'm going to expand on the left column to take advantage of all of those zeros. So in fact, the determinant of A minus lambda I is simply three minus lambda times six minus lambda times one minus lambda. In order to solve for roots of the characteristic polynomial, well, in this example, it's really quite easy. Lambda can be one or three or six. So there are three possible eigenvalues, one, three, and six. For each of those possible eigenvalues, now we want to solve for a vector avi equals lambda vi. Well, for lambda one, we're gonna set that equal to one. So therefore, we're trying to find a vector v sub one so that av1 is equal to v1. We're going to just let ABC as a column be our unknown vector V1. Well, if I just took the vector ABC, stuck it here, and computed that product, 
we would get 3a plus 2b minus c. In the second entry, we'd get 6b plus 2c. And in the last entry, we'd get c. So here is a v1. But this is supposed to be equal to v1. Therefore, 3a plus 2b minus c is equal to a. 6b plus 2c is equal to b. And c is equal to c. So we have three equations and three variables that we now attempt to solve for a, b, and c. Now the last equality that c is equal to c doesn't tell us very much. So we think maybe we can just set c to be anything we want. Now a first impulse and a reasonable one at that is let's make our lives simple by saying c is equal to zero. But if c is equal to zero, then in this equation, we would get b is equal to 6b, which would force b equal to 0. And if b and c are both equal to 0, this first one would force a is equal to 0. So if c is equal to 0, a, b, and c are all equal to 0. But an eigenvector can't be the 0 vector. So that's not going to be a legitimate solution for us. So let's take c to be something else that's pretty straightforward to work with, like 1, and keep working. So we've assumed that c is equal to 1. Now the second equality, b is equal to 6b plus 2c, allows us to solve for b is negative 2 fifths. And now that we know the values of b and c, we can find that a must be 9 tenths. So for the eigenvalue of 1, we have in fact found a corresponding eigenvector. 9 tenths for a, negative 2 fifths for b, and 1 for c. So here is an eigenvector that we found for lambda 1 is equal to 1. Any scalar multiple of an eigenvector will again be an eigenvector for the same eigenvalue. So this is a perfectly legitimate solution, but it's pretty typical to present eigenvectors in a simple form when possible. So we're going to multiply by a common denominator of 10 and just get 9, negative 4, and 10 for our first eigenvector. We're going to do similar work for the second eigenvalue of lambda 2 equals 3. So we need to find a column vector v2 so that a v2 is equal to 3 v2. Again, we let v2 be unknowns a, b, and c. And our system of equation becomes 3a plus 2b minus c is equal to 3a in the top entry. 6b plus 2c is equal to 3b in the second entry. And c is equal to 3c in the bottom. The last equality note, c is equal to 3c, forces c to be 0. And then in the second equality, if you take c is equal to 0, you just get 6b equals 3b, whose only solution is b is equal to 0 as well. So here were the three equations we had, and we've determined that b and c must be 0. Well, with that information, what happens to the first equation? You get 3a plus 0 minus 0 equals 3a or 3a equals 3a, or just a equals a. So we can let a be any value we want, except for 0, because that would give us all zeros, and that's not a proper eigenvector. So we're going to set a equal to 1 to get 1, 0, 0 as an eigenvector associated to eigenvalue 3. Finally, for our last eigenvalue of lambda 3 equals 6, we go ahead and set up that a v3 should equal 6 v3. Again, using unknowns for our entries of v3, we get 3a plus 2b minus c is equal to 6a for our first entry, 6b plus 2c equals 6b for our second, and c is equal to 6c for our third. And again, the last equality, c is equal to 6c, forces c equal to 0. Once we take the information that c is equal to 0, the other equalities simplify to 2b is equal to 3a and b is equal to b. So let's let b whatever we want. But we want 2b to equal 3a. So since our goal is to, you know, for aesthetic purposes, have all integers at the end, rather than letting b be 1, let's let b equal 3, and therefore a is equal to 2. So 2, 3, 0 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 6. So we have found three eigenvectors, 9, negative 4, 10, 1, 0, 0, and 2, 3, 0 with corresponding eigenvalues of 1, 3, and 6. For a second example, find all eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors of this 3 by 3 matrix. Now the characteristic polynomial is pretty easy to set up by expanding upon the left column. So the determinant of a minus lambda i 
All we have to do is on our diagonal, instead of have a 50, it'd be 50 minus lambda, 40 minus lambda, and negative 65 minus lambda. Now expanding along the left column to compute that determinant works out pretty nicely here. Expanding this whole thing out gives us negative lambda cubed plus 25 lambda squared plus 5,000 lambda minus 187,500. Using a computer algebra system, while it is technically possible to do by hand, computer speeds this up for us, this factors as lambda minus 50 squared, lambda plus 75. So there are two eigenvalues, 50 and negative 75. Now we've chosen to label lambda 1 as negative 75 because this was an eigenvalue that had algebraic multiplicity 1. The factor lambda plus 75 only appeared once in the characteristic polynomial. So since the geometric multiplicity can't be 0 and it can't be any larger than the algebraic multiplicity, there has to be at least one eigenvector to find here. So it has to have geometric multiplicity 1, so that will make our lives a little easier. So we're looking for a single associated eigenvector with unknown entries at this point, which has to solve that a v1 is negative 75 v1. In other words, from our first entry, if we go ahead and imagine the column a, b, c here, the product a, v in the first entry would give me 50a minus 20b plus 10c, but we want that to be equal to negative 75 times the same vector, and there the first entry would be negative 75a. The second entry is going to give us 40b plus 5c is negative 75b, and finally 230b minus 65c is negative 75c. So for lambda 1 being negative 75, we have three equations and three variables. Moving everything over to the left, we would have the following. 125a minus 20b plus 10c is 0, 115b plus 5c is 0, 230b plus 10c is 0. Now the last two equations are exactly equivalent to one another. If I simply took this equation and multiplied it by 2, it would be the same as this one. So there's no extra information gained by having both of these floating around. All it tells us, if I just solve either one of them for c, is that c is equal to negative 23b. So with that in mind, let's just set b is equal to 1, and therefore c is equal to negative 23. Okay, so here were the three equations we had once we moved everything over to one side to get the right to be all zeros. We set b to be 1, and we set c to be negative 23. That makes the last two vanish. With b equals 1 and c equals minus 23, all you get here is 0 equals 0, which does not tell you anything. However, in the first equation, it would now tell us that a is equal to 2. Okay, if b is equal to 1, this becomes minus 20. If c is equal to minus 23, this becomes negative 230. And at the end of the day, this will simply tell you that a is equal to 2. So for lambda 1 equals negative 75, we found an eigenvector, a equals 2, b equals 1, c equals minus 23. And again, any scalar multiple of this would work. Remember, we started off by assuming b is 1. What if we had assumed b is 10? Well, then c would have had to be negative 230, and then a would have had to be 20. Everything would have just been multiplied by 10. Okay, so back when we chose, let's just let b equal 1, it doesn't have to be. It was just a convenient choice because eigenvectors are only defined up to a scalar multiple. Okay, for our next eigenvalue, lambda 2 being 50, this had algebraic multiplicity 2. So it might have geometric multiplicity 1. In other words, there is at most one linearly independent eigenvector. Or it might have geometric multiplicity 2. Maybe I can find two linearly independent eigenvectors. Well, we go ahead and set up an unknown eigenvector as ABC and try to find possible solutions to AV equals 50V. Our first entry, our second, and our third. Okay, so we have three equations with three unknowns. So take a look at the system of equations that was generated. The only time that A appears at all is in the first equation. And on the left I have 50A, and on the right I have 50A. Those immediately cancel out. In other words, this system of equations has no information at all about the variable A. And once you cancel those A's from the first line, all three remaining equations just reduce to C is equal to 2B. So the only information we get from these three equations is that C must equal 2B and A can be absolutely anything. 
So can we come up with eigenvectors a, b, c, where a is any number at all and c is equal to 2b? Yes, and we can find two linearly independent such vectors. Here is a possible choice, though certainly not the only one. We need c to be equal to 2b, so what if they're both zero? Well, then a can be any number, but it can't be zero because an eigenvector cannot be the zero vector. So if c and b are both zero, then a can be anything and one is a reasonable choice, although anything other than zero would be fine. What if c equals 2b is not satisfied with zeros? For example, maybe b is one and then c must be two. Well, then a can be absolutely any number at all and then zero is a convenient pick but absolutely anything at all would have been legitimate to put up here. So this is a particularly simple choice of two linearly independent eigenvectors for eigenvalue 50, but of course there are many others we could have come up with. For our third example, find all eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors for this three by three matrix. Well, the characteristic polynomial is again easy enough to set up, expanding on the left, we're taking advantage of those zeros. So the determinant of a minus lambda i is 2 minus lambda times the quantity 11 minus lambda times negative 7 minus lambda minus negative 9 times 9, so plus 81. Expand all that out to get the following cubic. Then you need to find roots of this cubic. Well, it actually factors quite nicely as simply lambda minus 2 cubed with a minus sign out in front. So there's only one eigenvalue, 2, but it has algebraic multiplicity 3. Therefore, its geometric multiplicity can be one, two, or three. In other words, I might only be able to find one linearly independent eigenvector, or maybe two of them, but not three of them, or maybe three of them. So now let's go and find all possible eigenvectors with eigenvalue two. So the only eigenvalue is two, so we go ahead and set up V as our unknown column ABC and try to solve AB is equal to two V. In the first line, we would get 2a plus 4b minus 2c. That's just from taking the matrix A and multiplying by the column ABC, 2a plus 4b minus 4c. On the right, we have 2v, and its top entry would be 2a. In the second row, 11b minus 9c is equal to 2b, and in the third, 9b minus 7c is equal to 2c. All of these simplify to just b is equal to c. Notice that the only appearance of a's cancels in the top row, then all of them reduce to b equals c. So the only restriction on an eigenvector v is that b and c must be equal. So there are two possibilities, maybe they're both zero or maybe they're both not zero. If both b and c are zero, remember that the zero vector is not a valid eigenvector, in which case a can't be zero. If a can't be zero, one is a pretty simple choice. If b and c are equal but are not equal to zero, maybe they're both equal to one, in which case a can be anything at all and then zero is a very reasonable pick. So at most, there are two linearly independent eigenvectors. Maybe b and c are both zero, or maybe they aren't, in which case those two cases are spanned respectively by one, zero, zero, and zero, one, one. So this is a maximal linearly independent collection of eigenvectors with eigenvalue two. So we only were able to find two linearly independent eigenvectors. Therefore, the geometric multiplicity of the only eigenvalue, two, was smaller than the algebraic multiplicity. It appeared as a factor lambda minus two cubed in the characteristic polynomial. Its algebraic multiplicity was three, but we were only able to find two linearly independent eigenvectors. Its geometric multiplicity is smaller. This means the matrix A is not diagonalizable. It is not possible to find a basis of eigenvectors. We could only find at most two linearly independent eigenvectors. So we cannot diagonalize this matrix. Altogether, what did we discuss in this little review? Finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices, it's a very important topic in linear algebra and it's going to be important for us shortly. We haven't really gone into any of the detailed algorithms for finding eigenvectors and eigenvalues, sticking instead to just straightforward computation based off the basic definition, which works perfectly fine for two by two and three by three matrices, even sometimes four by four. 
We also didn't discuss how to diagonalize a matrix when it is diagonalizable, in other words, when there is a basis of eigenvectors. This is a useful skill and very relevant to some later material, but we're always going to phrase our later material in terms that avoids explicit discussion of diagonalization. So it's a useful linear algebra thing to know, but we're not going to be using it. In most circumstances, a problem is either easy enough to work out by hand, in which case everything we did is really all you need to be able to do, or you may be allowed to use a computer algebra system, in which case finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors is really just a matter of knowing how to use that computer algebra system, and it will quickly give you the results you need. So if it's a problem you're being expected to do by hand, this is generally all you need to do. If it's a problem on which you're allowed to use a computer algebra system, well then you can do pretty much anything you want. 